whoa, a character that can transform into another character? That's pretty cool. But you've definitely seen this before, haven't you? I think it's time that I told you a secret. Me. Yeah. Macro. I can also transform into the one and only Sports, Sports Boy! Boy! Having both of these forms has its benefits. Sports Boy has the power of being great at all sports. Macro is kind of funny sometimes. Knock, knock. Who's, who's, there? who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Crap, I forgot who's there. Stop, stop. Oh, no. Sports Boy has super speed. Macro, uh... Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road? Or is it the road? God, is it the road? Oh, man. Sports Boy has super strength. So a tree was like, oh, fuck, what did the tree say? God damn. So if you think Pyra and Mithra are cool, remember who did it first. And if you think Pyra and Mithra are thick, remember who has always been thicker than a snicker. Mithra is from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and is another anime sword fighter. They can't keep getting away with this! In the game, she is in Aegis, which is a powerful blade that gives its wielder, which is this dude, Rex, a bunch of power. But then you may be wondering, who's Pyra then? Well, in the game's lore, Mithra became super depressed due to all the destruction she caused in the Aegis War. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Aegis? Aegis? Ah, who cares? And then she transformed into Pyra. So in reality, Mithra and Pyra are the same character but with wildly different personalities and powers. There's a lot, like a lot more to them. But if we talked about the convoluted plot of Xenoblade, you will log off and watch some Minecraft YouTuber or something. So just know that this dude Rex awakens Pyra and uses these Blade Women hybrids in battle to save Save the day. Make sense? No? Well, I tried. In Smash, they aren't being controlled by Rex, and they make for a pretty dynamic duo that can be changed mid-fight whenever you feel like it. It's a clever way to incorporate them into the game. So now that you kind of maybe know a little bit about these two, let's learn how to play them. Shall we? So real quick, your down special switches between Mithra and Pyra. Kind of like Melee, Zelda, and Sheik, except you actually want to use both characters. They have some big differences being that Mithra is very fast but doesn't do much damage and Pyra is a lot slower but does big, big damage. They have different special attacks, but their normal attacks are the same, just with differing speeds and power. So with all of that out of the way, let's start with their normal attacks. Their jab is a quick slash into sparkles that is a quick way to rack up damage. Their forward tilt is a quick slash that is one of Mithra's fastest moves, and with Pyra, it can kill pretty easily. Yo, do their swords sound like lightsabers or am I just crazy? The same thing applies for their up tilt. Fast with Mithra, slow with Pyra, but kills easily. The same thing also applies to the dash attack. You'll find that this is a trend. Each of their down tilts are incredible for starting combos into air attacks, even at later percentages. G -g -g combo Their neutral air is a classic spinny move that at this point is just going to be Sakurai's go-to nair. I mean, who doesn't do this as a neutral air? It's one of their fastest options in the air and is a great landing option for both women. Mithra's up air is great for juggling enemies forever. And Pyra's up air can get clean kills. Mithra's forward air is great for edge guarding, and Pyra's is also good for that too, but it just ignores the whole edge and just sends them to the next stock. It's wild. The same thing applies to their back air, which kind of looks the same. Everything is just a bunch of swipes. What is this, Tinder? <laughs> Mithra's down air is a quick swipe, which can also be a decent landing option, but Pyra's has the ability to spike. which I pulled off live on Twitch. <clears throat> the spike! Let's go! Mithra's grabs barely throw enemies anywhere. But her down throw is great for starting combos. Pyrus throws yeet enemies pretty far though, but even then, the down throw is gonna be your go-to because, come on. 
c-c-c-c-combo! Now, their smash attacks are all the same, except that Pyras kill at stupid low percentages, and Mithras are like being hit with a toy sword. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. Mithra can still get a kill at high percentages, but man, Pyra really knows how to smack a- Okay, now that we got the things that they share out of the way, let's talk about what they don't have in common. Their special attacks. Let's start with Pyra. Pyra's neutral special is Flame Nova, or as I like to call it, the Hula Hoop of Death. She makes a ring of fire that can be charged and is insanely strong when charged, but it has no range and is pretty slow, so I don't recommend using this move that much. Pyra's side special is Blazing End, where she throws her sword and it spins in a fiery blaze. It's a powerful projectile that can be used to edge guard and get a lot of damage. And sometimes even kill. You can't attack until it's over, so you're a bit vulnerable, but you can shield and move, so it's not that bad. It is a projectile that can be reflected though, so just be aware of that. Pyra's up special is Prominence Revolt. It has her shoot up in the air and then come crashing down, making a huge explosion with insane KO power. Seriously, this is Pyra's best KO move. But it is not a great move for recovering, like at all. It has no horizontal distance, so don't even try to recover with Pyra. There's just no point. Especially since you can be Mithra! As I mentioned before, your down special swaps you to the other character, and like Pokemon Trainer, it acts like a mini dodge for a few frames. You can switch whenever, and I recommend doing that when you desperately need to recover, as Mithra's up special is way better for vertical movement, and her side special is great for horizontal movement. Her up special when not charged is Ray of Punishment, where she flies up and shoots one shot in the air. And when you hold that move, it becomes Chroma Dust, which shoots multiple but weaker projectiles. Like I mentioned earlier, her side special Photon Edge is great for recovering horizontally. She attacks with a bunch of rapid slashes that are great for getting quick and easy damage on enemies from a distance. And although it may not do that much damage, the visual clutter will hurt your enemy's brain, which is the damage that you really want. So just spam this move and annoy your opponent. Mithra's neutral special is her strongest kill move, Lightning Buster. If you don't charge it, it's a decently fast multi-hitting attack, but when fully charged, it's a very powerful KO move, with an extra fifth swing that KOs at low percentages. You can even charge it in the air and change directions mid-charge, making it even more deadly. Megusta. Mithra has one last ability, Foresight, which activates whenever she perfectly dodges, creating a few frames where the enemy is slowed and you can punish them. This is a very slick ability and one that you will definitely want to practice. Wow, that's a lot. So here's the TLDR version. Mithra has fast moves for getting quick damage, and then Pyra comes in to finish the job. It's like having a Lucina that can switch to Ike for the kill. It's pretty nuts. As somebody who understands Pyra and Mithra on multiple levels, you know that I've already mastered them. So listen to these pro tips. Number one, practice switching between Pyra and Mithra mid combo to maximize their potential. Your opponent can be fighting Mithra for one second, then catch a Pyra up special the next. It can be awesome to pull off. Number two, you should also practice their switch as a dodge, which can also be great mid-air as a mix-up for landing safer or even to dodge big attacks like projectiles. Number three, this character is one of the only ones that gets a benefit from their alternate costume changes. You can trick opponents by using their alts with opposite colors or using alts where they're both the same color. This can seriously confuse enemies and even yourself sometimes. Number four, in general, Mithra would be the character you use 90% of the time since she is simply faster, has more consistent combos, and is better in neutral with solid kill power. As strong as Pyra is, if you make any mistake with her, all of her moves have a lot of end lag, and you will be punished severely. So just be smart when you do switch to Pyra, but you could essentially solo main Mithra. Let's just be honest here.
Although I wasn't super excited when they were announced, Hyra and Mithra ended up being a ton of fun to play. While they are anime sword fighters, they add a cool twist to their archetype and are a welcome addition to Smash. But how are they for noobs? For noobs, I would say they are hard to play. Mastering when to switch between the two will be crucial, and a lot of their combos and abilities do require solid timing that most noobs will struggle with. You can learn to be good with them, but it will require a ton of practice. But what do you think? If you play them, do you like Pyra and Mithra? Do you think they're easy to play or hard to play? Are they OP and need nerfs or suck and need buffs? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, I just remembered why the chicken crossed the road, so I need to go write that down real quick. So, uh, I'll catch you later. Ya yeah, noob!